What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions, and also how to find their domains, all right? So I'm gonna start with addition and subtraction, which are pretty straightforward, but then I really wanna focus on multiplication, but specifically division, because that's where it gets a little bit more complicated, all right? So let's just start with this one right here. So we have f of x is equal to three times the square root of x, and g of x is equal to negative 10, times the square root of x, right? So if we wanted to add these two together, uh, we would say f plus g is equal to, and then you would literally just add the two functions together. So here we would just say three square root of x plus uh, negative 10 square root of x, right? So we can actually just write that as minus 10 square root of x, right? Now, if you wanted to, you could factor out the square root of x from both of these. Uh, so then, in the middle, we'll just be left with three minus 10, right? Three minus 10, and that's equal to negative seven. So we have negative seven times the square root of x, right? So then this is equal to negative seven times the square root of x. Okay, so this would be our simplified answer. Now let's talk about the domain. So there's two things you wanna look at when you're trying to figure out the domain. First, you wanna just look at the two original functions and then you want to look at your answer basically when they're combined. Now for the original functions they have the same domain at least in this example anyways and the domain is basically just the x values that we can and can't have or in other words restrictions. So what are the restrictions for x in both of these cases? Well in both of these cases x cannot be any negative number right because we can't take the square root of a negative number. So in other words x has to be just all positive real numbers, right? So there's two ways we could say what the domain is. We can say that x has to be greater than or equal to zero, or we could say that the domain goes from zero, and we're gonna include zero, that's why I put a bracket, all the way to infinity, right? Positive infinity like that. All right, here's the next one. So the two functions we have is f of x is equal to 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5, and g of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 2. And in this case, we're going to subtract that, right? So here we're going to say that f minus g is equal to, well, what's f? f is 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5, and then we're going to subtract uh, g of x, which is this whole thing, right? And we'll put, since we're subtracting it, we'll put it in parentheses. So x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 2. So if we simplify this, uh, f minus g is going to be 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5. And then here we're going to have minus x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. Okay, and now we can just combine like terms. Uh, so let's see, we have three x cubed and negative x cubed, negative one x cubed, right? So that's positive two x cubed, uh, positive two x cubed, and then squareds, uh, positive three x squared minus two x squared, that's positive one x squared, so just plus x squared. That's those, and then uh, we have this negative four x just by itself, and then five plus two is seven. So plus seven, right? So that's as simplified as we can get it. So this would be our simplified answer right here. Okay, now let's figure out what the domain is. So again, let's look at our two original functions up here. Uh, here we have basically a trinomial and here is a longer polynomial, but in either case, you can see that both of them don't have anything weird in them. And by weird, I mean like fractions or radicals, logs, anything like that, right? So in both of these cases, x can be any positive or negative number. So our domain, again, can be any numbers. So you can write that as r, like that, which just stands for all real numbers. Or you could write it as the domain goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, like that. All right, so here's a multiplication problem. So f of x is equal to x squared and g of x is equal to the square root of x, right? So let's multiply these together. So f times g. So this is gonna be equal to x squared times the square root 
of x. Now, whenever you have a radical, so for example, the square root of x, uh, the square root of x is the same thing as x raised to the one-half power. The cube root of x is the same thing as x raised to the one-third power. The fourth root of x is the same thing as x to the one-fourth, and so on, okay? So that's how you can convert from a radical to an exponent, if you have to, like we do in this case, to simplify this, right? So then this is equal to x squared times x to the one-half. We have the same bases, right? So then we just have to add the exponents together. So this is equal to x raised to the two plus one-half, which is equal to two and a half, right? So it's equal to x raised to the two and a half. So that would be the same thing as five over two, right? So then our final answer right here, multiplied together, is x raised to the 5 halves. Okay, cool. Now let's figure out what the domain is. So again, you want to look at your two original functions. Uh, now, f of x, you can see that x can be any positive or negative number here, and it won't cause any issues, right? But for g of x, uh, that's not the case, right? We can't have any negative numbers for g of x, right? So since f of x doesn't have any restrictions, but g of x does have restrictions, that means g of x, or the domain of g of x is basically gonna rule the domain overall, okay? So again, the domain for a square root would just be x is greater than or equal to zero, or we could say that all our x values have to go from zero, including zero, all the way to positive infinity. All right, now let's talk about some division problems because these are going to be just a little bit harder, right? So first, we had f of x is equal to x minus 2, and g of x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2, okay? So here we're going to do f divided by g, right? So what is this equal to? Well, f over here is x minus 2, and g is this guy, x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay, so to simplify this, uh, we can actually factor the bottom. So on top, we still have x minus 2. And on the bottom, let's see, uh, we can break x squared into x times x. And then two numbers that add up to negative 3 but multiply to positive 2 would be negative 2 and negative 1. Okay, so now that we factored it out, let's remember something about fractions. Now, in any fraction, the denominator can never be equal to 0. Okay, so in this case, what x values would make our denominator equal to zero? Well, as you can see, we have two factors, right? x minus 2 and x minus 1. So if you set each of those equal to zero, so I'll just do it over here, uh, x minus 2, set that equal to zero, and x minus 1, set that equal to zero, you can see we get two answers for x, right? For this one, we would get that x is equal to positive 2, and this one, x would be equal to 1. Okay, so for our domain, x cannot be equal to 2 and x cannot be equal to 1 because if x is ever equal to either one of these, it would make our denominator equal to 0, right? So these are the two numbers we're going to exclude for our domain. Uh, now here we can simplify this a little bit more. Uh, so on top and the bottom, we have an x minus 2 and x minus 2, so those just cancel out. So then here we're just left with 1 over x minus 1, okay? So this would be our simplified answer. But the main thing I want you to focus on, because that's where these get a little more confusing, is the x values that would make our denominator equal to 0, because that's what we need to keep in mind for the domain. So for the domain, what would the domain be? Well, again, do either of our two original functions have any restrictions? No. x can be any number over here and x can be any number over here, right? So no restrictions there. But when we combined all this into a fraction, you can see we had restrictions in our denominator. Uh, these two guys right here, or I should say these two guys right here. So x can't be equal to two or one. So the domain here we would write as, uh, we can x can be any number, right? So it can go from negative infinity to one, and then we're gonna write union, and then from one to two, one to two, union, and then from 2 to infinity. All right, let's try one more division problem. So here we have f of x is equal to 7x raised to 3 halves, 
and g of x is equal to negative 14x raised to the one third, right? So again, f divided by g, all right? So let's simplify this guy. So on top we have 7x to the 3 halves over negative 14x to the 1 third. Okay, now here uh, to clean it up a little bit, you can pull out the coefficients if you want. So 7 over negative uh, 14, and then we're going to multiply that by whatever we still have left, right? So x to the 3 halves over x to the 1 third. Uh, this reduces down to just negative one half, right? So this is equal to negative one half. And then here, x to the three halves divided by x to the one third. As you can see, we have the same bases, right? We have an x and an x, but they just have different exponents. So to simplify this, all you have to do, since we're dividing here, is subtract the exponents. And you always write the one that's on top first, right? So then here, this is going to be equal to x raised to the 3 halves minus 1 third. Okay, now to simplify this, uh, what is 3 halves minus 1 third? Uh, well, we can rewrite this, just change both denominators to looks like 6's, right? So we can change it to 9 over 6 minus 2 over 6. And this is equal to 7 over 6, right? So then here, this is equal to negative 1 half times x raised to the 7 sixth. Okay, or you could write it as x raised to the 7 sixth over negative 2, if you want to bring it back in, right? Either of these guys right here would work for your answer. Now, let's talk about the domain. So again, let's check our original functions. So uh, f of x, do we have any restrictions for x right here? Uh, here we actually do, okay? And let me show you why. So x to the 3 halves, why is there a restriction on this? Well, if we take out the 3, uh, then we have basically x to the 1 half. And remember, this is the square root of x, right? So this is equal to the square root of x. Now, what happened to the 3 up here? Well, you just raised this whole thing to the third power. But in any case, it doesn't really matter what number we have out here on top. What's important is we're taking the square root of a number in here, right? And again, we can't take the square root of a negative number. So we can't plug in a negative number here for x. So again, the domain for that would be that x is greater than or equal to 0, or we could write it as a bracket and then 0 to infinity like that, okay? So that would be the domain of f of x. What about g of x? Does this one have any restrictions? In this case, uh, this one doesn't have any restrictions because if you look at this part, the important part, x to the one third, x to the one third, again, this is equal to the cube root of x. And we can have negative numbers for cube roots, right? We can have positive or negative numbers. So there's absolutely no restrictions here. So the only restrictions is coming from this guy, so coming from f of x which again is this one right here. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.